I'm thinking of freezing my eggs. How long can I wait? My name's Michelle Quick. I am a fertility specialist and clinical director at IVF Australia. We are seeing increasingly more women um, coming in asking about egg freezing, primarily because they haven't met the right person yet. They're worried about running out of time. They've got other priorities in life that they're trying to get done first, like um, going up the corporate ladder or they want to get some travel done first. They want to be financially secure before they start having a family and they're worried about their egg reserve and how much time they have to try and have a family. And I guess in the first instance, getting a measure of your ovarian reserve would be important. And there's a couple of different ways in which we do that. One way is by getting a blood test, which is called an AMH test. This is a blood test that can be done at any point in your menstrual cycle. Um, you don't need to be fasted to have the blood test done. It'll cost about $80 to get the blood test done because there's no Medicare rebate number for the blood test. But this gives you a level of hormone in your system. And this hormone is made by the eggs in the ovary. So someone who has lots of eggs will have lots of hormone. Whereas someone who's used all their eggs up, there's nothing to make the hormone. So hormone levels are low. Okay. And for each age group over the age of 24 years of age, we know how much hormone should be in your system. So by doing this test, it gives us a gauge as to whether your ovarian reserve is normal for your age or whether you're low for your age. A pelvic ultrasound scan can also help. This one needs to be timed to your cycle. So the best time to do a pelvic ultrasound is just after period's finished, because at that point in your cycle, when you do an ultrasound and look at the ovaries, you can actually see how many eggs are sitting in the ovaries waiting to be chosen to grow for that cycle. And by looking at how many eggs there are, that also gives you an idea of how many eggs someone has left in their ovaries. And this is important because we're born with all of our eggs already in the ovaries. And what we do is we use our eggs up as we get older and we don't know how to make new eggs. So that's why the older we get, the harder it is for us to get pregnant. And then we run out by our 50s and that's when our periods stop and we go through menopause. Now, added to that, there's the issue with egg quality. So these tests that I've mentioned so far will tell you about the number of eggs that someone has, but it doesn't say anything about the quality of your eggs. The quality of eggs is best correlated to the age of the woman. And we know this as well, up until about 35 years of age, it's relatively easy to get pregnant. Between 35 and 38, it starts to get harder to get pregnant. And then from 38 onwards, really quickly, the fertility drops off. And that's because the eggs that have been in the body for longer, they're not as nice as younger eggs. And so the quality of the eggs change as women get older. So when you talk about freezing eggs, yes, the number of eggs you have is important but so is your age because that then gives you the quality of the eggs and the likelihood that these eggs are going to create a pregnancy down the track. So even though we still have eggs at 38, 39, you need to freeze loads more eggs in order to get that chance of pregnancy at the end because of the quality of those eggs. So the best time to freeze eggs would be when the woman's in their early 30s because that's a good balance between we should have good number of eggs still in reserve, but also the quality of the eggs should be quite good, okay? And doing it in your early 30s has also given you some time to meet the right person and avoid doing the process altogether. So early 30s is, is about the right time frame that most women will consider doing this. And freezing eggs would be an IVF cycle. So with an IVF cycle, what we're trying to do, we're trying to manipulate the woman's normal, natural menstrual cycle. So at the beginning part of each, at the beginning of each cycle, there'll be a bunch of eggs sitting there and the woman will choose one egg to grow because humans, we only have one baby at a time. So when the woman grows that one egg, the remaining eggs, they die for the month. This is how we finish all our eggs by the time we're 50. So every month we're wasting eggs. So when you do IVF, what you're trying to do is supplement the natural hormones. So instead of the woman just choosing one egg to grow, now we can get more eggs to grow. So if we take those eggs out, then that month she would lose fewer eggs than if we weren't stimulating the ovaries. So doing IVF doesn't speed up menopause or use the eggs up any quicker than normal. Every month those eggs are there. And if we don't take them, they're gonna go anyway. So how we supplement the hormones to get extra eggs to grow, we give injections. And they're like a pen and the woman will click into the tummy every day for about 11, 12 days. This will make the extra eggs grow. We then have to take the eggs out. And taking the eggs out, literally it's a 20 minute procedure. You're sleeping, you don't feel what we're doing at the time. And from the vagina, we take the eggs out. So there's no cuts on the tummy. 
woman goes home that day, most are back to work again the next day. So it's quite a minor procedure really. And once we have the eggs, we freeze those eggs, okay? The woman will then get a period about seven days later and then the hormones reset from there. And the eggs can be frozen for years and years and years um, until the woman's ready to use the eggs down the track. And it may not be for the first child because you know you might freeze your eggs when you're in your early 30s but meet someone when you're 35 36 start having children 37 38 it might be your second child when now or your third when you're now in your 40s and this is when you'll want to use the frozen eggs so there is a bit of a lag between when women freeze their eggs initially and when they actually come back for their eggs down the track now bearing in mind that's what the IVF process involves there's also cost associated with that and risks and in terms of costs, Medicare doesn't fund fertility treatment if there's no medical reason for you to need to do it. So in most situations, egg freezing, just in case, Medicare doesn't fund that kind of treatment. Added to that, you've got ongoing storage costs, which most women can cope with every six months, it's about $200 to keep the eggs frozen, that bit's okay. But your third cost is using the eggs down the track because at that point we need to finish the IVF process. So at that time, the partner would have to give us sperm, we defrost the eggs, fertilize the eggs, create the embryos to then make the, make the woman pregnant. And there's a cost associated with that. There's also risks when you do IVF and that's primarily to do with the egg collection procedure because even though it's not a massive procedure to take the eggs out, all medical procedures have risks and the risks would be infection, which is small because we clean before we do anything, but inside the tummy next to the ovaries, there's a bladder in there, there's bowel in there, there's blood vessels. So whenever we take the eggs out, we've always got an ultrasound machine there. So those things, we can see them. So the risks of damaging anything, they're really, really small, but as a woman who's freezing eggs electively, you need to be aware the risk is there because if something like that were to happen to you, it could be a massive deal. For example, you got an infection in the ovary, 0.1%, but you got an infection in the ovary, lost the ovary. Or you got an infection in your pelvis and it meant down the track you couldn't get pregnant naturally when you wanted to. You, you wouldn't be in that position if you didn't freeze eggs and do IVF in the first place. So you just need to balance up. Yes, we're young. Yes, we want to do this to protect ourselves and give ourselves some insurance for down the track versus the costs and the risks of putting yourself through that process. The other risk that, that you need to be aware of is, is also the follow-up of people who have been born from frozen eggs because whilst we've been trying to freeze eggs for a good 30, 35 years, we've been rubbish at doing it until about seven, eight years ago. So now when you look at people who have been born from frozen eggs, there's about 50,000 people around the world. Um, they're all about seven, eight years old, so they're children. So far they're healthy, but this is the information we've got, okay? And then the final risk with going through the egg, um, the egg freezing process is that there's also no guarantee that freezing eggs will result in a pregnancy down the track. You can freeze 100 eggs and it won't become a 100% chance of pregnancy. And the chance of pregnancy from frozen eggs are very much linked to the age of the woman, the age at the time you freeze the eggs, because that correlates with the quality of the eggs that we've frozen. So the younger you are, the higher the chance that you'll have a baby down the track using the frozen eggs, but you've got to balance up your age versus the costs and risks and avoiding the process unless you really have to do it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for all things fertility. See you later.